In the last lesson, we went over how to make the Hello World program. So I just took the simple print Hello World and I added the standard header that we have. And where we normally have just main here, I changed it to game scene instead of main just because um, we're going to have several different scenes and each one is going to be its own function. So we're going to start with the game scene. I then just printed out three blank lines to give us more space and I added this part here which is going to become our gaming loop. Um, for now it does nothing. Pass just means it, it stays in here and it just goes around and around forever and does nothing. So our Pi badge still just says hello world. That's fine but it's sort of a, a nicer layout than we had before. Before we start we also had the output from our Pi badge show up on our screen, but we're eventually today going to be putting images on our screen. So we'd like our terminal output not to just come here, but to also come somewhere else. To make that happen, we're going to add another Chrome extension. I'm just going to go here. And if you go to the landing page for CircuitPython tutorial and scroll all the way to the bottom, you can see we have two tools. This one is the Chrome text editor, if you prefer using that over um, using the web interface, you can use that. It actually um, color codes for Python, although it doesn't do IntelliSense. The other one is this program called Serial Monitor, and what it will do is capture what's happening on the terminal and print it back on our screen so that we can see it instead of showing up on the Pi badge. So we're just going to click there and we're going to add the Chrome extension. If you're on a Chromebook or you're on any computer that has Chrome, it's all the same. If you're on a Chromebook, it'll just show up in the list of your apps. On any other computer like mine on a Mac, if you just type in the URL Chrome colon backslash backslash apps, you will get the list of your apps and you can select the text editor that I talked about and now this serial monitor. So if we open that up, the serial monitor has to be connected and it needs to know what device to connect it on. So on a Mac, it's this one right here, this TTY USB modem. On a Chromebook, it probably, oddly enough, says Acme, A-C-M-E. And I'm not quite sure what it says on a Windows computer, but hopefully you can figure it out. The speed we're always going to connect with is just 9600 baud and then we connect. So anything that shows up on the terminal, at this point that was just our Hello World program, will now show up over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back here and we're going to select our program and we're just going to shrink it over. And we're just going to make a single change and then save it back and hopefully you will see it show up in the terminal as well. So I'm just replacing my code, make sure it's code.py and hit replace. And you'll notice, there we go. It says, hello world. And that's the exact same thing that is happening on our Pi badge. So on the Pi badge, it actually just said hello world as well with no exclamation point. So this is gonna become really useful. I'm just gonna place it down here so that we can see what's going on with it and close that and then my IDE I'm just going to place on top of it so anything that shows up down here I'll still be able to see it. So we're just going to alter this program slightly instead of um, to get images showing up the first thing we need to do is add a couple import statements so the CircuitPython has a couple libraries that we're going to be using and the first one is called uGame and the second one is called Stage. So we're going to be using both of these libraries to build our program. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually go back to the website and I'm going to go to lesson two that we're working on today and I'm going to scroll down right to the bottom, almost the bottom. And you'll notice there's this 
directory of all these files. So these files we're going to slowly add into our program and they do different things. The one we're going to focus on today is this one, Space Alien Background. So this is going to be the background that shows up on our PyBatch. So I'm just going to download it, stick it in our Downloads folder. You'll notice that it's a BMP file. I think I already had it there. So I'm going to go to Downloads and there it is right here. So I'm just going to take that file and copy it to the CircuitPython, our PyBadge. So it's now in the folder where our code is. And this will allow our code to access this file. Remember that it's a bitmap and this is its name. So I'm going to just copy its name right now because we're going to need that in a minute. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable that goes to that file, grabs that image, and brings it back. So in CircuitPython, this is actually called an image bank. So I'm going to call my variable image bank background, and I'm going to use this stage library to grab an image bank. Notice it starts with a capital B, and it's from a BMP file that is 16 bits wide. And I'm just going to drop in the file name. So if we actually go and open up this BMP file, that's what it looks like. And it's actually 16 pixels wide and each little image box, you'll see several of them, is 16 by 16 and there turns out that there's 16 of them in total. And that's the standard that it has to be for CircuitPython to be able to do this. We're then going to take, create another variable called background and we're going to use our stage library and we're going to create a grid on our PyBadge. So it turns out you can actually have 10 by 8 of the 16 by 16 little pixel images on a PyBadge. So I'm going to use my variable that holds this image and I'm going to create a 10 by 8 grid to hold all these images. Next thing I'm going to do is create a variable called game and once again I'm going to use this stage library and it has a function called stage that uses the uGame library and it will use display to show our images on the screen and the 60 here actually refers to 60 hertz which means that our images are going to be refreshed 60 times a second. Once we have our game library we're going to use it to create layers. So it turns out our Pi Badge with CircuitPython has two layers. The background, which is set initially, and then there are sprites that show up on top that move around. So we're going to create that background image first today. We're going to take this background variable and we're going to add it to a list of images that can make up this particular layer. At the moment we only have one image, but we will change that eventually. And then we take our gain variable and it can have a function called render block, which takes these layers and just shows them on the screen. So what we've done today is imported some libraries, imported an image, take that image and put it into a variable, created another variable that is a grid of this image background and has 10 by 8 of these 16 by 16 images in it. And then we created another variable called game that is actually the display that will show up, so this display, and we're refreshing it with 60 hertz. And then we took these images 
and we added them into a list and showed them. Because I didn't specify exactly which of those images in the list is going to show up, by default CircuitPython will just take the very first image and just reproduce it all across my screen for me. So, just going to save this file. And if we look at our screen, it now showed up with this matrix of the very first image over and over again. So there's 10 of them across and 8 of them down. And it's a little star field, and that's the screen that we're going to use for the background. So 